Todd Shapiro show. I'm uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm worried about what's going on because they are both not qualified in my opinion. Ari Goldkind, what are your thoughts? Well, I had a different reaction as I watched it last night than many people seem to have, uh, which is that you know between Trump sniffling and his interrupting, I don't think he did himself any damage whatsoever. He was Donald Trump. And in a nutshell, and we can get into it if you'd like, I can't think of one thing she said that was anything other than a platitude or pablum or politician speak. More of the same. And if whether you like him or you don't, and obviously on Twitter and social media, which I think is different than the electorate in the ballot box, at the very least, Donald Trump takes position. You don't have to like them. You don't have to agree with them. But for those of us who don't pretend we want to live in a politically correct world, he has the, as one of my favorite wrestlers, Mick Foley, would say, the testicular fortitude, whether he's booed in a room or laughed out in a room, lays out positions that are absolutely toxic to the political class and to being liked by the New York Times. He did that last night. He didn't alienate one of his voters. I don't think Hillary Clinton brought one voter over. And to me, what was really interesting, and I have a little experience debating, as you know, is she had an opportunity to drive a stake into him on the issue of his personal income taxes, which would have made him lose millions of viewers. And she just stood there spewing the double-speak politician boring uh, lines that she's being spoon-fed by somebody. So I I just thought it was really not the train wreck I thought it would be. Uh, But I really did think he had a very bad cold. So, yeah, I mean, he had the quality. Did you see that at Trump sniff is a Twitter account now with 3,600 followers, uh, more than most people get in the lifetime. And one night, Trump sniff, a fictitious sniffing account uh, where it sniffs at everything, is now uh, almost trending, basically. I found yeah, that, that kind of. tells you something about Twitter, not the intellectual capacity of the American electorate. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that they're too far apart. And, then, <laughs> and then, um, So, uh, the taxes, that's a good thing to bring up. Trump, I got to tell you, and I don't want people to think I'm a Trump supporter, but I got to tell you what I liked about what Trump said about the taxes is what most businessmen would say about anything in life, that there are laws that you try and get around to save money. I'm sorry. That's what business people do. That's what's successful business people do that's what the rockefellers i think wrote in the original curriculum which is not to teach the average public what to do how to manage our money how to get around certain laws so we wouldn't know how to how to invest how to be smart corners how to do savings you know instead we are taking advantage of in the system whereas trump understands the role how to take advantage of it and i think he was at least accountable saying well listen i basically am just doing what most businessmen do and and, and whether you see my, uh, my, you know, my, my tax statements or not, um, it's not going to determine on what I've done. Because you might see I'm over leveraged or you might see I'm maxed out here or this or that. But the fact is this, the valuation of my company is still billions and billions of dollars, the evaluation. And, and, and you know, for me, the more I start to understand business, Ari Goldkind. I kind of respected him for being the way I know most ruthless and, and, and good businessmen. I say ruthless because they're rich. It's the only reason why they're ruthless. Uh, and at least he kind of didn't really dance around it. I, I, you know, he, he, and what he basically said is you can't judge a person by that, by their, by their tax statements and tax returns. And, and then when it comes to you, Hillary Clinton, why don't you release your, your emails and then I'll, and I'll go and do it. And you know what? It was a bit of a challenge. And I, I kind of, in the game of war, in the art of war, I, res- I sort of respected that because this whole thing's big, one big smear campaign anyway. So why not him at least put that out there? What do you think? Well, I think you basically covered what my opinion was on that issue, but there, I'll get to the juggernaut part <laughs> in a minute. But you, you, you hit something that you actually, if you want to give Trump the ultimate benefit on that, he actually said something which is exactly what you said, which is, he interjected and interrupted and said, yeah, 
that makes me a smart businessman. So what I don't understand is why the New York Times and the Toronto Star today are going after him for that issue. We'll talk about what she should have said if she had any seichel, which is a Jewish term for, you know, real think on your quickness. He is doing, as you said, Todd, what every businessman or businesswoman should be doing, which is to minimize to all legal extent possible your tax obligation. And in fact, if you take his argument to a logical extension, the conclusion that any listener into politics or not should make is hasn't he essentially called out an insane tax system, an insane tax code in the U.S., and also in Canada, but more in the U.S., that lets a billionaire like him pay no federal income taxes. And by the way, who's responsible for the creation and sustenance? Past governments. Past governments that he not only is not a part of, but is on the record when he's criticized and says, yeah, I'm a businessman. I make political donations because I expect something in return. So we're either living in a bubble where we don't want politicians to tell the truth, i.e. Hillary Clinton, to start on the issues of black crime or black issues or the black community. Her answer, which was the most trite and insulting answer, I thought, to the black community, which was, well, look at the black church. What the heck does that have to do with policing Chicago, black on black crime? The issue. Okay, yeah, we'll get to that one. You're jumping. No, you, know, no, you don't no, normally no, jump no, stories no, here. But, but, right. Yeah. But, but, but back to the tax issue is you're right. He didn't avoid it the way she did, which would be not answering, staying silent. He said, yeah, that's what I do now. Where? Yeah, I'm where could she have done that dagger, that right. stake to him? So, that's what you mentioned. So I want to find out. To the heart, so the stake to the heart, if she was anything other than a scripted, teleprompted person, is this. He has the undying loyalty of the American public, 50% of them, the deplorables, because they believe he's on their side. What she should have done in that moment mm. is, is take that bait and say, ladies and gentlemen, I know you have tremendous allegiance to Donald Trump. I know you believe he's right on these issues. Trade this. But if you want to go to the ballot box knowing that you, ladies and gentlemen, every day break your backs to make a living wage, you pay your taxes, you pay your mortgage, you pay your employees a tax, just go to the ballot box and know that even though it's true, he can do whatever he does to minimize tax, while you're out there paying 42% of your income, Donald Trump, because he thinks it's the right thing to do, pays zero dollars. That in and of itself would have made people, even if they like his position on ISIS, Islam, guns, other stuff, you're going to have a tough time knowing you just went to work and are sitting in traffic as we speak, paying a tax bill on your house, your car, you're not making a lot of money, you're making 28 grand a year, but he complains that vets are underfunded, hospitals, bridges and tunnels, he is making zero contribution in income tax. Well, and she sort of alluded to that part of it, at least. Uh, but, you know, you're where, where the big thing, and J.J. Lieberman's co-hosting today, Ari, you'd love J.J., he's a great guy. Uh, and, you know, one of the things we were sort of already mentioning and talking about was the fact that this is about the disingenuous, elitist sort of feeling that Hillary Clinton has. And the one thing that Donald doesn't have is being disingenuous because he's so fucking forthright and truthful to the point where it's almost racist at point, if not racist, and that with certain things he says. And then also, though, with him at least being not seen as a guy whose shit doesn't stink. You know, you look at Donald, you're like, oh, that guy shit stinks at the end of this. Like, he's he's got sweaty balls. <laughs> you know, that's what people think about Donald Trump. They think he's a regular blue-collar dude. He, he has that way of not... He has a way of being compelling to an audience of people who aren't in his tax bracket, which would be zero dollars. Yeah, he's greasy. And he's greasy a bit. He's a little greasy. 
And, and and I think you're right. Hillary needs to paint the picture of him as an elitist for those who are maybe thinking, oh, he's one of us. Like, you're totally dead right. And I think that would be a great strategy by her campaign manager. Now, he also, in fairness, he missed, which is shocking to him because he comes up with insults and all things. He could have, in a very high road, because she did, she constantly repeated about her drapery father, and her oh. father's a draper. We were talking about, sorry to interrupt you, we were talking about this earlier, and before you speak, Ari Gold, kind of want J.J. Lieberman to say what he was thinking about this uh, with, with, the, with, the, with the, her daughter. Well, yeah, that's yeah. where I think you're going to go. You're going to mention Chelsea, right? No, but go ahead. Oh, no, I just say, I mean, basically the way she she uh, describes him of getting these loans from her, her uh, his father is the way her daughter is living her life. I mean, her, her, her daughter's a rock star based on just the Clinton name, based on her father being the president. Right. She, Hillary, is, she's as nepotism as nepotism. This, isn't this what America's trying to avoid, is to have these presidents that are, fa- like, these family presidents? Isn't that what kind of the U.K. does or with their... Right. The, so, the, so I'm glad you said it, because now the two of us will have hot water, which is your... Dead nuts correct, because what he should have done, and you you said this, so I'm not going to sound original now. <laughs> He's a lawyer. Whole, I'm just a drop out of community college. <laughs> of, of George W. Bush and Jeb Bush was exactly the criticism which nobody dares say to Hillary Clinton, which is very simple. There are hundreds of thousands, if not tens of thousands, of extraordinarily, and I mean extraordinarily qualified women, who would do just as good a job as Secretary of State, just as good a job as Senator of New York, and just as good a president as Hillary Clinton would make. The very idea that Donald Trump didn't go down the road, J.J., that you just mentioned, which is, but for being married, the spouse of President Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton arguably would be not within a hundred miles of that stage as the Democratic nominee. So for her to go after Donald Trump, who got a $1 million loan from his rich daddy, and somehow she's immune to the nepotism (laughs) argument, J.J., you just make, is absolutely, again, politically correct ridiculousness. But I'm surprised Trump on that stage didn't call out Hillary. Now, Hillary's eminently qualified. She's an extremely bright, intelligent woman. But the idea that she hasn't benefited from nepotism more than anybody else in the history of America (laughs) is insane to me. Insane. And and you know what? It's funny because I guess... People, you, you, you know, Trump might fear saying it because they're going to accuse. It's going to lessen the fact that she's a woman in a significant position to become the first, obviously, female president in the United States of America. And the way I think JJ says it, and the way I would look at it is, I don't look at that stuff. I don't, I, you know, I'm, I'm amazed there hasn't been a woman as president before. So for me, you know, that, that, that's just me being naive. Like I agree with everything JJ saying, but I wouldn't ever be afraid of saying it because then people uh, would say to me, well, you're, uh, you're uh, what a woman's not qualified. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying it based on if a man, a woman, a brother, a son, or a daughter, were in that position where your father or your husband was the president and then you have an easy life. It, 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 you know, you, different way because you're not saying it's about a woman it's got nothing to do with that let's use the example of barack obama as the first black president i think he's one of the best presidents in history even though i disagree with him on a small number of issues i think he's one of the most statesmanlike elegant leaders ever even though i disagree with him on matters of foreign policy now why do i say that because he is the first black president and nobody 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 can take away the fact that he is only there because of his own talents and his own merits. And that says to any black child born in Hawaii, born in America, born even in Kenya, if you follow Trump's racist argument back then, is that you as a young black person, not man, you can work hard, you can go to school, you can earn your own way, and through no handouts from anybody, you can be the president. 
the narrative that has always driven me nuts is this first female president thing, because what is the message to young American girls? It's not that you're Elizabeth Warren. It's not that you're somebody else who has no nepotism connections in politics. The message to American women, which nobody dares write a column is, well, if you marry the right person, then you too can be exposed to the halls of power. I would much more be impressed, not that there's anything wrong with Hillary, not at all, but if the first American president was somebody who came from nothing and no marital conjugal relationship and used that political persona to become the president and leader of the free world as an example to little girls who may not be able to marry the next Bill Clinton or Barack Obama. I never understood it. Yeah, and, and you know, the, the, the interesting part, though, if you are, say, a seven-year-old right now in the United States, you're a seven-year-old, what's, you know, the one intriguing thing about this entire uh, election, if you're a seven-year-old, and if you're bright, you can say, you know, you wouldn't know better that um, it was uh, it was ever an issue for a African American to ever be the leader of your helm. You wouldn't know that. You wouldn't ever think that it would might have been an issue for women to be considered. You wouldn't ever consider. And then and then you might be thinking to yourself, well, well, my 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 my. <laughs> Well, the bully in the playground could become one too, you know, the douchebag. So, like, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting if you're a seven year old. You know what I'm saying? The perspective of a seven year old? Uh, you kind of lost me there. To be Basically, honest. what I'm saying, dude, I is know, is anyone can get into office. That two decades ago, you wouldn't have thought that. Two but decades that's ago. That's true. And that's not true even if you look at Trudeau. That's the same narrative with Trudeau. Trudeau's only in, in the prime minister's office because of his daddy. What, yeah. you know, what about his abs? Well, he's got very, very good abs, but when those abs talk and pronounce sounds, they're almost unintelligible. <laughs> yeah, I know. Anyway. But, it's this, just, but, it's, this is, but this is, I always thought, is, not, is, is the narrative that to Barack Obama's credit, is a beautiful narrative. Yes. Yes. No, no. But Barack credit. Obama broke every stereotype and did it on his own. He's relatively new to politics. He's all, you know, he's been a really leader his entire his life. Side. He's well educated. Really on his own. When I say really on his own, I mean really in a way yeah. that America should love. This narrative of Hillary being married to Bill and then running for the Senate. Come oh, on. Oh, no. Listen, the, 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 two, the, two of them, the two of them being the leaders of the respective parties. Is, is 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 so bullshit it's so scary it's so frightening and and i mean uh, i got people already coming up with all these different theories which is basically uh uh they're gonna hillary will probably win and then they're going to impeach her for the email scandal after she wins so that her no, vice president done. will that's actually done. be the that's president done. of the united states no that's done that's stupid it's never going to happen Whichever one of the two becomes president, is president, she'll never be impeached, she'll never be charged. The problem is, is that the pathway that America is on will continue to lead to the demise of more and more of the average American's job and salary. So then who would you vote for if you could, Ari, if you were an American citizen? Between whom? The two that are running. Well, Well, there's Gary Johnson, too. Yeah, who doesn't know where Aleppo is. But in any event... uh, you know, I, I have to tell you that because I don't think uh, Trump's fingers should be anywhere close to the nukes, I would likely vote for Clinton. But when I voted for Clinton, I would know I'm voting for somebody who couldn't give a rat's ass about radical Islamic terrorism, who thinks that she's the president, just like Obama, of the entire Western world rather than the president of the people of the United States. And that is a discussion that is very rarely had or understood, because the argument is always made in short that India, China, Brazil, all sorts of countries have come out of poverty during the course of President Bush and President Obama's years. However, the last time I checked, it's the presidency of the United States of America. So Hillary Clinton, with all these trade pacts and trade deals, which are inarguably... In our, uh, Trump did well on this point at the beginning, by the way. 
he really did do quite well at the beginning. These trade pacts are not for the American worker. They are for the American business owner. So you are going to see more wealth centered to the 1%. Yeah. Uh, now, you would have that under Trump, too, with his stupid, stupid, stupid Listen, tax plan of trickle-down. No, I, I, and I apologize for cutting you short. Um, it's okay. It's okay. The, 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 the mind-boggling thing for me as well is how the polls are so drastically different. And we got to run at this point, but I'll just give a, a quick list. The, the CNN poll obviously showed that uh, Hillary overwhelmingly won the debate, uh, uh, which is uh, 62% Ridiculous. to 27 to they're, they're, Yeah, drudge, go to Drudge, 80-20. go to Time. Go to uh, CBS New York. Go to Fox, obviously. Go to another one in Cincinnati. Go to all these different polls. And literally, it's like 70-30 to average is out to for Trump. And this is the point that Ari Gold kind of said on our show from day one, is the anonymity between uh, uh, what people might say at the dinner table or doing a poll or one day actually clicking a box and doing a vote where no one has to know what they did. Um, that that's going to make this race a fuck a lot closer than it is. Yeah. Yeah. Because people still look at him as a regular dude and a reality TV star, which, (laughs) (laughs) which is, which, you know what, as we end the segment, if people think about, think of all the things he said last night, if you don't like Trump that you don't agree with, or that you think shouldn't have been said, or are all these other words, think about what Hillary Clinton said. You can't even imagine a position or a line in the sand that she put. I have a lot of respect that he last night, even though, as I said, half of his stuff is batshit crazy, he puts a line in the sand and says, this is what I stand for, end of story. That is a lost art in the world. And I think one thing we can conclusively say here in a program called Canada Laughs, brought to you by our good friends at Pizza Pizza, by the way, that um, one concrete and unified conclusion is that after watching this debate... Thank God we live in Canada. Thank you to you, Ari Goldkind. We appreciate your time at Ari Goldkind. The Todd Shapiro Show. Turn up your speakers, especially if you're over 65. Sirius XM 168. Canada laughs.